one. And we're live. Take it from the top, Mr. Jab. So we can All right. inform our Hello, audience. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is our sixth episode of the C.S. Joseph Q&A. Um, we will be taking questions from the audience in primarily Discord. That's where we're going to get the majority of our questions from. However, if we also have some time, we'll be doing some YouTube questions. So feel free to drop a comment or two in the YouTube section, the YouTube uh, chat section, and we'll try and get you. Um, any, do we have any announcements? Yeah. I would like to announce that I am bad at the cyber <laughs> because this is like the second week in a row I've been trying to get uh, this to work, this thing right here. Like, like literally trying to get that to work. But because I am incapable of ordering things and getting a uh, HDMI cord or a cable to do it properly, uh, yeah, doesn't work. So, yeah, we were hoping to have the GoPro tonight for the awesome uh, video, but we got to stick with the regular laptop cam. But at least the sound is a lot better than what we were using before. At least I hope it is better but i think i think the gain is good on this so but yeah uh yeah getting there oh and also i'm broadcasting on periscope right now on my phone and i have no idea if there are people there or if people even see me so it'll be fun i'm just doing a new little experiment tonight and uh, my phone is uh on the gimbal uh broadcasting my mug on periscope too so why not uh why not do that because just gotta figure out how to do that right because I have no idea how that app works. So, but yeah, Jab, what do we what do we got tonight? What do we got? All right, but let's get let's jump right into it. And let's start with the first question. In order to get a better handle of, on the functions, can you manipulate someone from your Q and A crew by targeting one of their functions through conversation? It could be for good or evil. Good luck. The good luck was what I threw in. <laughs> yeah, good luck, right? Okay. Well. Uh, the answer, uh, the answer to that question is technically yes. I mean, yeah, I could actually social engineer my own crew in some capacity based off of utilizing cognitive functions and depth psychology, of course. But why would I do that? And furthermore, my own crew technically understands this stuff pretty well, including Mr. Jab here. So what would it gain me to actually do that? And then they're like calling me out on me that at the same time, it's like needless conflict, hashtag waste of time. So not really going to do it. I'm an ENTP, right? So as 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 an ENTP, uh, our virtue and vice, yes, I'm literally plugging season seven right now, but uh, watch the virtue and vice lecture on uh, ENTPs, sincerity versus insincerity. ENTPs have this problem where they gotta wear masks when they're around other people, unless those people actually understand them and they're okay with them being that way and then they don't have to uh, wear masks, right? And uh, as a result of that, basically everyone in my crew, uh, you know, with the label of the question, the person who asked the question, being, being that label specifically, uh, the crew, there's no point in me even doing that because I don't have to wear any masks around them because they are like totally cool with me being the way that I am and prefer me that way. So why bother? You know what I mean? So I'd sure you'd uh, yeah. exist. Uh, agree with me on that one, Jeb. All right. Now this next one is a bit of a handful. There's like three questions, two questions and then a statement built into it. Um, right. Around what ages do you think we should be taking more into account going into the other sides of our mind more often? So at what ages do people typically be capable of accessing sides of their mind? Um, well, I, between 38 and 42 is generally the years that uh, people – start developing their subconscious and getting over their own fears after they've been through a lot because they all have that life experience proof. It's like, oh, hey, yes, I survived like 40 years on this earth, which means I don't have to be afraid as much of stuff anymore because I've been here a long time. And based on that, I can start developing my subconscious now. Although I would recommend developing the other sides of your mind sooner than later, right? 
uh, with because I mean, if you're on the path to enlightenment, which is basically when you achieve mastery of all four sides of your mind, and you're able to bring them together together in like some kind of harmony and whatnot, like sure, sure, that's great. Yeah, definitely do that. But honestly, uh, when it comes down to it, uh, like just just do it as soon as possible. Like get over your fear, get over your worry. When I say get over your fear, I'm talking about the first, uh, the second gateway function. That's the fourth function. When I'm saying get over your worry. That is the third gateway function. That's your nemesis function, your fifth function, basically. So seriously, master those, master those functions and you'll have those ac access to those sides of your mind for you to actually develop additional integration and eventually achieve enlightenment in terms of enlightenment defined by depth psychology, et cetera, so. Yep. The second part, he says, I mean, since you made your mis since you had your mistake with Logan, ah, oh, is there a, is there an age where we are more fully aware of what we can do? Ah, uh, more fully. Uh, I think you already answered that. Yeah. Is there I, an I age where that. you? Yeah, I answered yeah. that. Hashtag. And then the other bit, just more context as to why he asked that question, so we can just skip over. Yeah. That. Hashtag All next right. question. <laughs> um, Great Jedi Shadow asks, I think I may know how to attack in a way that might bring out either SE or SI. We're doing two different things in one interaction. This is both misleading. If they have SE, they will respond to being trapped. On the other hand, if they have SI, they respond to being misled. I may try and come up with an attack dialogue soon if left to me. It would be enlightening if you could somehow test this live joseph so what do you want to do okay so this is the same person who asked can you manipulate one of your members on the stream okay so so he's basically asking me for additional content that's going to be coming out in the social engineering season is basically what's happening here and to <laughs> which i'm going to say no you're just going to have to wait and watch <laughs> the series you have to you have to watch season 21 like seriously just patience it's coming and by the way i haven't been around much this week because i had food poisoning which sucks and i've been dealing with a lot of drama in my day job and i just haven't been able to get as many lectures out this week i will be getting additional lectures out this weekend also this q a session we're gonna be doing it once a week this is not gonna be like a an every two weeks thing we're doing it once a week now just like we do the how to type stream once a week. So just heads up on that. What's next, Jab? Um, in starting a business, how can an INTP approach finding and leading people? And just how to trust others and to do work in general? Awesome. That's a great question. So the answer to that is, is like the NTP way, the NTP approach to entrepreneurship, and that is through delegation. Delegation is is literally everything that an INTP or an NTP needs to learn to be able to do that. Trust, trust what others uh, say, but verify just in case. But then you have to take on the role of leadership. This is how an INTP, Elon Musk, has approached his uh, his businesses. Like with with Tesla, for example, he provides the, the the vision or the mechanical vision of what's being done consistently and uses his TI hero for decisions. But all the rational work, including how um, including how he handles, uh, basically, you know, he lets other people do the paperwork for him because what NTP like can handle doing paperwork, not very many. It's just, we just get bogged down in procedures. I'm literally quoting, uh, you know, uh, Darth Sidious from the first three movies when I say that, but doesn't matter. Like, uh, it's just delegation. Delegation is the key to success as an INTP in terms of entrepreneurship. Every good NTP has done it and learned it, and they've been able to become more capable as a result. Okay, let's push forward. Can you type Conor McGregor? ESTP question mark? Uh, I have somewhat looked at Conor McGregor. I don't know enough to really say for sure. Uh, I, I even went so far as to consider him an ENFP, actually. Uh, so, but I don't know enough to know for sure, but Conor McGregor is on our schedule for how to type famous people. Uh, so for season 20, 
uh, typing famous people. So we're going to be uh, definitely doing Conor McGregor in the near future, uh, but not yet. It is coming. All right. All right. The next question comes from King David. Lots of E's in there. Is it possible to be the life of the party in the right setting, even though one is typed as an INTP? So can someone be the life of a party as a non as an SE tricks? Yeah, absolutely. Seriously, to be the life of the party as an INTP, all you have to do is have a few beers. I'm not even kidding. You'll go into your shadow, you'll be your ENTJ side, your ENTJ side, and you literally just gain superpowers and are literally able to handle the pool table for no reason but other than the fact that you're drunk and yeah, you can be the life of the party. Just that that's literally what it comes down to become inebriated. Not that I would recommend people go get drunk all the time, but seriously, uh, some kind of mind altering substance is literally the best way to make that happen for sure. Only if it's legal hashtag, yep. not a recommendation. Yep. Um, all right, next question is, how can an ESTP female give a reality check without being disrespectful to an ISTJ male about sensitive issues? Oh, what a great question. Um, basically, uh, use SC, right? Yeah, you use your extroverted sensing hero, like immediately use your extroverted sensing hero. You want to give, uh, give him an experience he's not going to forget, essentially. Uh, ISTJs have this thing where they can get really stuck in their comfort zone and it inhibits them from, from growing. It inhibits them from personal growth because they're so comfortable and, you know, they like their world the way it is. And then if it grows outside of their control per se, because their, their horizons are forcefully expanded upon them, they have a really hard time coping with that. Right. So they need to be able to have some kind of freedom to be able to extend, expand their own horizons on their own. The problem is, is that when it is, when it comes to like a man, for example, who's facing potentially a stagnation or a failure to launch syndrome, which is actually very common amongst ISTJ males in feminist society, very common in feminist society. Uh, what they have to do then is literally have the self-discipline to force themselves out of their comfort zone and expand their horizons, even if it makes them uncomfortable. Right. So one of the ways that ESTP can do this, uh, the ESTP female, is to focus on self-improvement herself. If she focuses on self-improvement herself, like, for example, uh, let's say that she's like, oh, I'm going to get to 20 percent body fat. Right. And then uh, or I'm going to go get a new job or I'm going to read a whole bunch of books or I'm going to start a business or some kind of self-improvement and where she is not stagnating. Right. That's very important because remember, with relationships, you have uh, relationships that are equally yoked generally. Generally, people are equally yoked. And when one starts moving up the other, the other one becomes insecure and is wanting to get up with them at the same time. And then they just keep going in their relationship, typically, that we've seen that. Um, or the other one's already high and the other one will come over here and grab this one and bring it up with it, basically. And then they'll continue growing together, which is typically how relationships start. But in the case of the ISTJ and the ESTP, uh, the ESTP is at risk of pressuring, over pressuring the ISTJ with the SE hero, which can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing, right? Uh, but it is important, you know, because he's a male, he cannot be stagnating. And she's like, I'm losing respect for him because he's stagnating. So she has to literally directly tell him, hey, I'm losing respect for you because you're stagnating. And but only after, mind you, only after she herself has been putting obvious progress, right? Obvious effort into improving herself and proving that she herself is not stagnating lest she's like actually a hypocrite talking to him because the ISTJ is just going to look at her and be like, you're a hypocrite. Why do I listen to you? Why do you have an opinion right now? You know? So it's on, it's, it's really on the, it's the onus of the ESTP woman in this relationship to make sure that she is not stagnant herself and to make sure that she is elevating herself before she even remotely starts criticizing him. And that's, that's just the bottom line. And this is how, this is mm -hmm. how relationships work. They have to have that equilibrium because, because she's the woman in the relationship, she always has the expectation, the requirement to be respectful to her husband. 
That is required. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he is also required to be loving. And she has every right to call him out on him being disrespectful in as much as he, or him being uh, uh, unloving in as much as he has every right to call her out and be disrespectful. But she's not being disrespectful if she's the one proving that she's not the one who is stagnating, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's what it comes down to. Just. Yeah, all right. I, I guess that covers it. Let's move on to the next question. The next question comes from Sylvonic, and he asks, or she asks, I'm not sure. Is it common for ISTJs to find it hard to focus on more than one thing at a time or not pay attention to their surroundings when focused? So is it difficult for ISTJs to not pay attention to their surroundings and focus? The answer to that is categorically no. Like that's, that's like, that's a, that's an INFJ INTJ thing. They're NI heroes. Just got them so laser focused on this one thing that they can't even tell what's going on around them. Whereas an ISTJ is so aware of their environment around them. Like if they walk in a room that like, like is their room, for example, or is their living room, if it's their home or whatever, they're going to notice something out of place. Because their long-term memory, their introverted sensing knows where everything belongs automatically. And they're instantly going to know if someone was in their room messing with something or, or something changed. They will instantly know it. They have this insanely good environmental awareness. Whereas an INJ, not as much. Not as much. It's because they're just so focused and then they, they literally look through life like through a tunnel. You know, and uh, whereas introverted sensing users kind of look at life as this giant big picture. It's like a panorama, right? And they're literally walk around as this panorama and they're grabbing in all that information at all times from all directions. It's like they have eyes in the back of their head, basically, is how introverted sensing users work, basically. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, that how that works. I think that answers that question. All right, let's move forward. This comes from someone called James and he is an INTJ. And what he asks is, how would I know if I'm stuck in my ENTP shadow? And if so, what are the best ways to go back to returning to the ego? Uh, if he knows that he's in the ENTP shadow, um, when he's uh, overly How critical. Would he know? Yeah, when he's overly critical, when he's worried, uh, when he's committing, uh, like lacking in moral principles and committing social faux pas as a result on a consistent basis, right? That could be an issue. Uh, being overly critical in that way. Um, hmm. That's kind of how I would describe it for the most part. It's just, they're usually really worried about, um, about what other people want, worried about, you know, what's your angle, man? What's your game? You know, what's going on here? You know, and that's kind of the direction that INTJs would take it. So. I mean, he could always get an ENT friend and he'd be forced to pull back into his ego when he spoke to him or her. Yeah. All right, do you reckon that one's answered? We can move on to the next one? Yep. All right, searching for the edgy, who is an INFP, asks, I have a friend who tested an ENPP. She took another test and got INFP. She's bipolar. Is this common with others who are bipolar? If so, is it due to the foresight of the mind, or does it transcend the categories of this quadra? Okay, is this an ESFP bipolar question? Uh... No, it's from an INFP. So this INFP says she had a friend who once tested as an ENTP and then tested as an INFP. Now, the problem with that is it sounds like an MBTI test, which is not very accurate. Is bipolar? Is this common with others who are bipolar? Well, realistically, I mean, if you've looked at any of the scientific literature on the MBTI test in itself, what it was found is if someone took the test, you know, three weeks after they took it initially, they're going to get a different result. Right. So this might not be as a result of her being bipolar, and I'm so, I don't mean to hijack your show, Chase, but it's just something I remembered. Hijack um, away, man. What do you think? Um, I think this is likely more of a result of the failure of the MBTI test. I remember reading an article saying that, you know, I think there was a there was like a ridiculously high chance that if you take it again after four weeks, you'll get a different type. And if you think about that, that's 40% is really high. That's almost one in two. I don't remember the exact number, but it was somewhere around there. So 
there's a good chance this just might be the failure of the MBTI test in itself, but I am not sure as to how bipolar disorder affects um, type. So maybe you could chime in on that. To be honest, like a lot of people are misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder in as much as people are mistyped on a regular basis. So can I actually categorically answer that question with any real accuracy? No. And the reason why I can't is because the data points that are available to be able to answer that question accurately are just not there. We don't have it yet. Right. We will have it probably about two or three years from now, but we don't have it right now. So we're, we're, we are right. working on that. Right. You know, uh, ask that question in two or three years, and uh, hopefully we have the technology available. Yeah, definitely. All right. Next question comes from Arthur Hiroa. You talked about comedians in your INTJ video. I now wonder what comedians, blogs, podcasts you were talking about. So what are your favorite comedians? Uh, the comedian question. Uh, so I, I think really... he's asking... Who are yes. some good INTJ comedians? Yeah, he wants good... he wants to know INTJ comedians that I like. Uh, well, the majority of the comedians I like are actually INTPs, like George Carlin. God rest his soul. But uh, uh -huh. he's uh, in terms of other comedians I like. I really like Dave Chappelle a lot, but I mean he's not an INTJ, right? So, so I, I honestly I can't really. Uh, I haven't spent enough time to pay attention to him, but I just know that, I mean, it's a good chance he's an ENTP, right? So I'm not entirely sure specific on that. But uh, honestly, I can't really answer that question right now because I don't have any INTJ comedians that I could like come up with on the top of my head right now. All right. So let's keep going. Um, is there a functional origin of creativity? Or I guess I should say, is there a functional orientation for different types of creativity? For example, a sense of aesthetics, like what colors and textures go together to create a look, or the ability to express something almost intangible and ephemeral through the use of words. That's a good word. Okay, the intangible and ephemeral, that's extrovert intuition and actually could be introverted intuition in some cases, but it's mostly extrovert intuition. On the tangible side, it's extroverted sensing with introverted sensing uh, as, as you know, a backup to that. And that's kind of where creativity comes from. It comes from the perception functions. Creativity, creativity comes from the perceiving functions, basically. So that's just kind of where it, where it is. It's it's not really a judgment function thing. It's a perception thing. Yep. All right. Let's keep going. Red Peach asks, "How much of a difference does gender make when it comes to the same type?" I'm aware of gender bias, but does that affect how cognitive functions are being utilized? I.e., how a female or male INFJ would behave. Yes, the, the answer to this the answer to that question. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yes. I was just I was just gonna say this actually came up in the chat either yesterday or the day before. Oh it did? Yeah. And the answer I ended up giving in um, the voice chat was that males and females are nurtured differently and nurture affects how you how you how your type develops. And therefore if males and females are nurtured differently you're going to see some deviation in the type between the genders based on that nurture. Right. Uh, that is 100% correct. But also in addition to that, uh, when, when you're looking at, when you're looking at growing older, right? It like at, at, take a child, right? The child is in, they're in one of the, like, they're in a quadra, right? Because their cognitive functions, their ego is not fully formed because their brain is still figuring out which ego to be in, basically. And they start out in the quadra. So there's also, and then human nurture impacts, you know, okay, which part of that quadra in their nature that they're going to be in, right? We discussed this in Q&A episode one at length, actually. Uh, so that's, uh, that would be another example as to like how that could change things. But in, from a gender standpoint, if you refer to season 13 playlist here on the YouTube channel, uh, I talk about how, uh, nurturally speaking, gender is about, you know, males focus on the big things of life, whereas females focus on the small things of life, basically. That doesn't, now the small things of life does not necessarily mean that they're any less valuable right? It's just that they're not as a priority. You know, men typically prioritize careers and whatnot, you know, more so than women, right? Of course, a lot of the 
feminazis who are probably like listening to this right now disagree with that, but it's actually been statistically proven. Sorry. You know, uh, they even actually had like a, um, like an old tribe in the middle East, um, uh, or the, the near East, as I was corrected by someone at the meetup <laughs> group this week, uh, on Wednesday night. Uh, yeah. Uh, they did a study there and they found that that was the case. So it's all about prior prioritization. It's about primary versus secondary. So primary for men is the big things of life. Secondary is the small things of life with women. It's the other way around primary for them. It's the small things of life. And then the big things of life is secondary to them, right? That's how they go together, right? It's the yang and the yin coming together for a whole. And it's literally how that works. So uh, if you want to find out more, please watch season 13 uh, to get an idea of how gender would potentially impact the types as we explore the mature feminine and the mature masculine. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's keep going. I'm an INFJ who is recovering from major depression. My hippocampus has shrunk. Do you think this would affect my the empathy abilities of my FE or the memory recall abilities of SI? It's possible. Uh, I would actually have to defer to Dario Nardi on that and his research into neuroscience as it affects type. However, how he identifies people's types, he just relies on tests, which they're all mistyped or like a good portion of them or the majority of them are mistyped. As a result, his data is not exactly accurate, but his method is pretty accurate. He just needs to be able to identify people's types a lot more accurately. And then that could actually really propel his research even further. Right. And uh, it's uh, I think a lot of people don't give Mr. Nardi uh, the recognition he deserves for everything that he has uh, achieved as a result. Uh, the problem is, is that he is relying on archaic testing uh, capabilities in order to detect which type is who for whichever human being. Right. And that's that's like the main issue that he faces. So I would I really defer to his judgment on that subject. OK. Let's keep going. Uh, what is the specter from introversion to extroversion in the 16 types? Do you have more info on the hormones in women? You talked a bit about testosterone in the mature feminine video. Feminine video. Um, so testosterone in women, I'm not a doctor, There's so a don't take this as medical advice, but uh, you would kind of want it around 40, I would say, in your blood test for your total testosterone. Uh most they say healthy is like 17 like the allopaths or the regular doctors out there say it's 17 which is like ridiculous 40 is what i would recommend uh and if you need to find out more about that there's a book called the secret female hormone there's also a book called the hormone secret by dr tammy moralia i highly recommend that there's also the hormone cure by dr sarah gottfried as well Although I maintain that Dr. Tammy Moralia, who is also an ENTP, and I've met her in person, uh, she's uh, she's definitely uh, the authority on the subject, in my opinion. So if you have questions about female hormones, I will defer to Dr. Tammy Moralia on that as well. Uh, and the other bit you missed out was the specter from the specter from introversion to extroversion in the sixteen types. Yeah, I don't have what enough. I don't have enough information to answer that question. They're basically asking, like, is there more extroverts than there are introverts, and and based on and then how is that data spread between all of the types? I don't have that data in front of me to be able to comment on that at this time. Okay. An INTP female asks, "Where can I meet ENTJ ENTJ males?" ENTJ males. So where can we find them? Uh, I keep saying meetup.com way too much, but seriously, go to meetup.com. Uh, really, to meet to male ENTJs, go to trade shows. Like literally go to trade shows. Be a salesperson or a non-salesperson and just go to trade shows. Buy a ticket to a trade show and walk around to the booths. You'll find ENTJ men everywhere. And they're typically the guys running their booths because they're like business owners. Focus on the small business owners first, because that's where you would typically find them because the larger businesses, they had just you know underlings there instead of them themselves at their booths. So focus on the small businesses and you will find ENTJs en masse. It's pretty easy to detect them, go to trade shows for sure. 
Nice and easy. And she also asks how to get an INTP to admit his depression plus drug use problem and actually listen to people around him, such take action. Context, his family isn't around and he blames them. Um, throw him in the dumpster, get away from him, and let him just sink into his uh, ditch where he belongs. That's basically all I can do. I mean, SI child is if SI child is comfortable being that way. Good luck changing SI child. It's like the immovable object. You're just not going to be able to do it. Uh, best to abandon that person, in my opinion, definitely. Rip. Rip. Okay, this this person asks where to meet INTJ women. Where to meet INTJ women? Uh, Meetup groups. <laughs> Politics and philosophy discussion groups, uh, trade shows, a lot. Definitely the trade shows. Uh, tons of events. Uh, the Everett Boat Show. <laughs> like seriously, like they like boats. Uh, that's kind of where we professional settings. Um, although, never ask a woman out at her place of work. That is like the stupidest thing. Like, never do that. Uh, it's okay if they ask you out there at their place of work, but it's not the, it's not okay the other way around. It's just generally not something I would recommend. Uh, but yeah, INTJ women, they're really, really rare. In fact, they're the rarest of all the women with the exception of maybe ENTJ women. We don't necessarily know for sure which of those two is rarer than the other because you hear claims from so many people. But uh, they do exist, and uh, you can attract them uh, pretty easily if you're hosting a really cool meetup that interests them, or if you're doing something that interests them, right? Or even like a Discord server, it is possible to meet them. But you would have to like be able to have the resources to actually cultivate a relationship with. Otherwise, if you're just like those standard white knight dudes on the internet, you know, hanging out on Discord trying to talk to chicks and whatnot, good luck. You may as well just waste your time. You know, like not, not right. something I'd recommend. Like, I mean, you'd have better, you'd have better luck going to the bar, to be fair. <laughs> so. Wow. All right. Uh, hey, dude, do people use a critic function to compliment others? Which type? Uh, so this is an ESTP. He's asking, do people use the critic function to compliment others? Yes. I use my critic function to compliment others all the time. It's especially when I'm telling them the following. You are stupid, and I'm doing it for their benefit. <laughs> That's how it's not my really critic a compliment. <laughs> Oh, but it is a compliment. They just don't know it. Well, what if you went up to someone and said, wow, you're really smart. Wouldn't that be using your TE critic to compliment someone? Absolutely, because I would be doing it in a satirical way. Oh, my God. <laughs> So you've never unironically told someone that they're smart. Oh, sure I have. Sure I have, yes. I've told you that. Okay. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, I don't know if they're supposed to know that. I wouldn't want to, you know, expose you, on this, put you on the spot. Oh, okay, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right, let's keep going. A-Reg asks, what do you mean when you say that we must feed our demon to not allow it to leave its cage? Okay, so the demon... Uh, so there's three things about the demon you have to understand. So the demon exists to, as the superego uh, to reset your life if it becomes out of control and your ego, your subconscious, and your shadow cannot, or all, aka unconscious, cannot solve that problem. So it becomes the nuclear option that you can use to explode your life and reset it, basically, and rise like a phoenix from the ashes. That's how it's supposed to be used. However, if the ego is not given the opportunity to you know, indulge every now and then it will just grow stronger and stronger and stronger until it breaks out and potentially had could potentially actually reset your life for you, uh, outside of your control, also known as midlife crisis, etc., or even like a, a quarter life crisis as some young people would say, but that's, that can happen with the super ego. So what you want to do is indulge it every now and then, like me, for example, with my ESFP demon, sometimes I just like making fun of people out of spite or making or giving them a bad day out of pure spite. You know, because my ISFJ subconscious is like, yeah, that person deserves it anyway. So go ahead and have a little fun. 
You know what I mean? So it's, it's just like micro indulging into your super ego every now and then not something I recommend, uh, but it is important to just realize that you got to give it something every now and then to keep it like tame and happy in its cage, throw it a few meat and bones here every now and then. So, so otherwise, if, if you starve your super ego, it's just going to come out and just like, blah, you know? All right. So, but so let's take this from a religious standpoint. Religious circles call uh, the superego sin nature. You know, like 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 that's what Catholics and Protestants call it, especially you know from from Christianese. And I'm translating here. So sin nature is a problem. Now, typically, the church what the church will do will tell you, okay, you are a, you are a sinful person. So we're going to create rules and boundaries around sin. So if you go into a bar, that means that you're obviously planning on being an alcoholic. No, that's not necessarily true, but they have these like weird rules, especially at the Catholic Church with their rules around sexual intimacy, which is just, in my opinion, absolutely dumb. But that's what they do anyway. And they have all these rules because they're trying to contain sin and they're trying to contain the superego. You can't contain the superego. You have to learn how to live with the superego. That's the point. That's the whole point. So it's not about running away. Otherwise, because if you're doing fight or flight with your demon with your super ego guess what it will fight or flight you and then you're completely screwed and you're going to find your life is completely screwed you have no idea how or why that even happened right and not something not something i recommend um because all of a sudden you realize everything's on fire and you're like oh how did that happen well that's because you weren't paying attention right so anyway just uh just be aware that's kind of generally how the superego works, and you kind of have to placate it every now and then. Okay. All right, the next question is from an INTJ, and they say, my INFP friend thinks his function stack doesn't make sense like an INTJ's function stack does. And it really bothers him. He says, FI makes him irrational and overly emotional, along with having T as an inferior function, and he prevents him from getting anything done, so he's a failure. How can I explain that his INFP stack is good and useful instead of hindering and bad? Uh, by forcing him to go volunteer with you, basically. You have to like literally drag him to do volunteer work and actually show him his own value by actually forcing him to help other people. Literally, that's it. Like you have to, you have to drag SI child around and force SI child to do things against its will because it's the only way it's going to learn because they're stuck in their comfort zone otherwise. And by taking them, like for example, to uh, I don't know a blood bank and assisting people there, who knows? It might create some inspiration inside this INFP to get him out of his SI child comfort zone and actually be focused on helping people for once instead of just focusing on making himself happy all the time. Yeah, I mean, from looking at that, that just sounds like someone who's using their type as an excuse to not grow. And I see that a lot. They're like, yep. oh, look at me. I've got a demon function. That means I can't have any long-term memory, INTJs. Yeah, and to which I tell the INTJs, if you don't have a freaking notebook, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Oh, look at me. I have a trickster. That means I'm completely ignorant on something and you got to cut me some slack. Lol. No. Learn. At least learn how to emulate. Jesus. Anyway, yeah, let's move forward. Um, so this comes from an INFP. My parents are quite overprotective, yet hot-headed. They are an ISTP and ENFJ. Due to my anxiety, they won't let me get out of the house but I want to be treated like a normal person. And I think this is making it worse. Got any advice to convince them? So got any advice to convince them of what again? So I think the problem is, but I just want to be treated like a normal person. And I think this is making it work because they're overly protective. They're not giving her the freedom she wants. Like, so this is like a parent thing. So due to her anxiety, they won't let her go out of the house. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you got to get free somehow. Get a job. That would be nice. Prove. Prove that you can get over your anxiety by being productive, basically. That's what I would say. Okay. Got, about, got about yeah. a minute left here, uh, Jab. 
before I got to get going. Sorry, we had to cut it short tonight, guys. Oof. We've only done 40 minutes. I thought we'd go for at least now. Uh, can you speak about how your parents' personality types affect the personality types of their kids? Is there a personality type genogram? For instance, my parents are ISFP and ESTP. Is there some kind of logic as to why their child turned out to be an INFJ? Uh, there is, and I'm discussing that at length in season 17. Hashtag next question. All right. What are your thoughts about dreams and the relation with the unconscious? <laughs> I answered that question recently. Uh, I don't think that uh, dreams are always exactly coming from the subconscious or the unconscious or the, or the specific side of the mind per se. It's uh, now a lot of people have argued it's specifically from the unconscious and I get that that's fine, but uh, there has been evidence to show that's come from the subconscious as well. Uh, we're not entirely sure yet per se, but again, I'll have to default to Dario and Nardi on this one. Uh, to answering that question, because I would say that his research is even a little bit more accurate than even some of what uh, Carl Jung was originally saying about uh, about dream uh, dreams in the past as well. So, all right, um, how does Jungian psychology compare to Freudian psychology? Uh, Freudian psychology is more about psychiatry, where and treatment of of. Uh, phobias and neuroses, whereas Jungian analytical psychology is depth psychology, it's actual psychology, it's about the science of the mind and the study of the mind, it's not necessarily like psychiatric treatment, etc. Okay, can someone shift into a different side of their mind due to hormone fluctuations during pregnancy? Absolutely, yes, and that question was answered last week, yes, yes, yes. Yes. What factors drive compatibility and intimacy and how are these different from those for general compatibility? I will not be answering That'll that be question tonight. No. Next. That will be coming in a later season. Uh, yes. Should an INTP and INFJ couple actively work to become more social? Is there a long-term negative effect of being happy just by being at home together? No, there is no yeah. long-term effect. They can be home together just fine. They don't have to go socialize. People who keep telling INTP and INTJs in relationships that they have to do that, they are wrong. Do not listen to them. Live your lives the way you want to. There is no standard that you have to follow. The standard for your relationship is your standard for your relationship, period, end of the story. I don't care what anyone else's opinion is. I don't care what your kids say. I don't care what your parents say. I don't care what your church tells you. I don't care what your community tells you. I don't care. Your relationship is your relationship, and you have absolutely every right to figure out ex what makes you happy and do that. So do that, please. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've said in the past to grow, you should always get out of your comfort zone. But Absolutely. Like, you don't need to do that as a couple or no, become don't. more social. I mean, if you read the No More Mr. Nice Guy, it teaches men specifically that you need to have good relationships with fellow men. So technically the INTP, if he was a male, or the INTJ, if they're a male, for example, they would need to have man friends. So please have man friends. So. It was actually INFJ, not INTJ. Oh, okay. INFJ. S uh, same diff. Sorry, same diff, kind of. Um, but anyway, actually, right. one more question and for tonight, and I got to get going, sadly. All right. What if an INTJ wants to develop SI? As in, INTJs easily remember the bad experience and easily forget good experience. So how does an INTJ develop SI? By being around other SI users and absorbing their experiences into them, basically, so that they can experience more through them. That's how I would answer that question. All right. Well, that's the last question. I'm going to I'm going to give this one a nice pin so I know which one we're up to. Awesome. Next episode. So just so the audience is aware, we have a Discord server. The Discord link is in the description of every lecture on the YouTube channel. These Q&A questions are put into the Discord server, and we read off uh, those uh, Discord server, uh, off the Discord server for the questions. Now, we have in the past looked at YouTube questions coming in on the chat, uh, but sometimes people uh, also like... Uh, 
they put their super chat in, which is like, I don't know, they like pay a dollar or something. I have no idea what it is. And then all of a sudden it lights up and like, oh, someone's asking a question, et cetera. And, uh, and then we stop and then we answer their question and then we continue going through the list. But if you want to be able to get on these Q&A sessions and get your specific questions answered, all you have to do is go join our Discord server, basically, and then go to the Q&A session uh, uh, channel and then just put in your question. And we go down them in order every single week. We just keep going on and there's always more questions and then we just keep adding to them, et cetera. And typically these shows have been like, I don't know, two hours long, but we're going to be doing them weekly. So we're probably going to be doing like hour long episodes, Q and a sessions every week. And we're targeting Friday nights at nine Eastern for that right now with the occasion of going uh, on Thursday nights at nine Eastern. So we might actually do all of our streams at like, um, Tuesday and Thursdays at nine Eastern. So we're working on that right now for our schedule. So thank you all for your patience on that. But that's just kind of where we're uh, we're going at it. So anything else I'm forgetting, Jab? Uh, not really. Uh, with that, thank you all for coming. Um, feel free to leave your questions for next time. We will be doing these weekly now. We'll be doing shorter weekly sessions as opposed to the two hour bi-weekly fortnightly sessions yeah Sorry, not bi-weekly fortnightly. yeah and it, it, we're probably gonna end up doing them tuesday thursday uh indefinitely if we can uh we'll we'll see uh but it, it just it just all depends um but remember join discord get your questions in we'll handle it um and otherwise i have to sign off folks because i have coaching so you all have a good night and uh i'll see you guys next week Hashtag sell out. <laughs> totally. <laughs>